This is the line module for OPZ by Teenage Engineering. This module expands the I.O. of OPZ and adds an audio line level input, a line level output, as well as MIDI in and out. The MIDI in and out can also be switched to a trigger input or output or a pocket operator output. In this video, we'll take a look at how to install the module, relative settings, and examples of how it can be used. Let's get started. Let's start by unplugging any cables to OPZ. Power off the device by rotating the yellow knob on the side all the way counterclockwise. Flip the device over, rotate each of the four rubber feet counterclockwise. You can use your fingernails, a screwdriver, or a Lego tool in the cross holes. More on this in a moment. Carefully remove the backplate. OPC comes with a dummy module installed. Remove the dummy module. You can remove the two legs of the dummy module to use as a tool for the cross holes. With the line module in hand, rotate the cross hole at the bottom counterclockwise. Place the module into OPZ with the four connections aligned with the four holes in OPZ. While pressing the module so it's flush with OPZ, rotate the cross hole 90 degrees clockwise to lock it in place. Note, the line module has switches on the MIDI input and output. By default, these are set to MIDI. You'll need to remove the backplate to set these to trigger or PO. Now place the backplate onto OPZ. Make sure that the Bluetooth pairing button aligns properly with the button on the backplate. With the backplate flush to OPZ, rotate each of the four rubber feet clockwise to lock the backplate into place. We can now power on OPZ using the yellow knob on the side. Let's pair OPZ to the OPZ app to get additional visual feedback. Within the OPZ app, press the scan button and then the Bluetooth pairing button on the bottom of OPZ. OPZ should now be paired with the app. In the app, navigate to the main OPZ screen. On the OPZ, press and hold the track button and then press the module track. In the app, we see visual feedback that the line module is installed. We can also see that the MIDI I.O. is set to MIDI. Let's connect a device to the line input of the module. With a TRS stereo 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter cable, connect the output of a source device, like the PO33 pocket operator, and connect the other end to the leftmost connection on the module. That is, if you're looking down on the unit. The line module will automatically detect the input. In the app, we should see an S appear above the input of the module. This designates that a stereo connection is made. Keep in mind that the view of the module in the app is from the bottom of the device. So right on the bottom is left on top of the device. The input and output can also be set to mono. Let's quickly show how to change that setting. Unplug the cable from the input of the module. Press and hold the screen button on the front side of OPZ and then insert the cable into the input. Looking at the app, we can now see an M appear above the input designating a mono signal. This means the left channel of the input source is duplicated to the left and right of MPZ's signal path. There's a few settings we can adjust for the incoming signal. These settings are located on the module track. Press and hold the track button and then select the module track. The input is automatically activated when we connect a cable. Press and hold shift and then press the number 4 button to toggle the input on and off. Let's set the volume of the incoming signal. With the source device playing, let's slowly increase its volume. If we take a look at the input connection on the line module, we can see an LED that acts as a meter of the incoming signal. If we increase the signal too much, we can see the LED turn red indicating the signal is clipping. Set the source device's volume so that it's just below clipping, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent. Now let's set the level of the signal in OPC. Press the shift button until yellow LEDs are displayed below the four primary encoders. Use the red encoder to adjust the volume of the input. We can pan the incoming signal using the yellow encoder. And like other tracks, we can apply a filter or an LFO to the incoming signal. The audio output of the line module expands audio routing possibilities of OPZ. In addition to the main output of OPZ, we can use the output of the line module to send specific tracks to be processed independently of the main output. Let's see an example. We have a pattern playing that we can hear coming out of the main output of OPZ. Let's reconnect our cable to the line output of the module, which is the second from the left. In the app, we can confirm we have a stereo connection by the S above the output. 
With our pattern playing, we won't hear anything until we send tracks to the output. Press and hold the track button and then select the module track. Now press and hold the shift button and select which tracks to send to the output. A yellow LED will display on each track being sent, in this case, the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat. We can also adjust each track's send level going to the output. Press and hold the shift button and then press and hold a tracks button until we see a solo LED below the green encoder light up. While still holding the shift button, use the green encoder to adjust the send level of that track. The track's LED will change as the send level of that track changes. In the app, we can see the send levels of each tracks when we hold the shift button. By default, the send levels are set to 100%. Also, if we quickly look at the module's output connection, we can see there is an LED on the output that shows us a meter of the output signal. That's a handy feature as it will show a meter of the output signal even if a cable is not connected. We can also adjust the dry level of the send tracks going to the main output. To show this, let's switch the cable from the module's output to the main output. When we play the pattern, we can hear what's not being sent to the line module's output. On the module track, press and hold the track button and then use the red encoder to adjust the dry level of the selected send tracks. Lowering it to zero will completely remove the send tracks from the main output. Now it's important to know that this is inversely related to the send levels of the selected tracks. If a send level is set to 100% for a track and the dry level is set to zero, we should not hear the track coming through the main output. If we increase the send level of a track, we should slowly start to hear it coming through the main output. Press and hold shift and then press and hold a track until a solo LED is lit below the green encoder. Continue to hold shift and then use the green encoder to adjust the send level of that track. We should hear it slowly coming through the main output and it will decrease in level going out of the line module's output. High five if you're still with me. Pro tip, we can create two mono outputs from the module's stereo output by panning send tracks. Press and hold the track button and select a kick track. Press the shift button until we get yellow parameter LEDs below the four encoders. Use the yellow encoder to pan all the way counterclockwise. Now press and hold the track button and select the snare track. Press the shift button until yellow LEDs are displayed below the encoders. Use the yellow encoder to pan all the way clockwise. When we play the pattern, the kick should be on the left and the snare should be on the right. We can then use a breakout cable to go into separate channels on a mixer for more options in mixing and routing tracks. Another pro tip, you can cue tracks through the output of the line module before sending them to the main output. You can either use an outboard mixer for this or just plug headphones into the module's output. Using the features we've seen so far, we can process individual tracks through outboard gear for greater sonic possibilities. For example, we can send tracks through an effects processor like Analog Heat and then bring them back into OPZ. Let's see a quick example. Here, we're maintaining a stereo signal path as Analog Heat is a stereo processor. Of course, we could use a variety of different gear to process the signal. Just keep in mind that if you intend to use mono devices, you'll want to force the line module to send and or receive mono signals using the screen button technique we showed earlier in this video. Okay, we still have the MIDI I.O. side of the line module to look at. From what I can tell, this is identical to the OP Lab module for the OPZ, so we've already seen these features. Both have MIDI in and out and selectable switching for trigger voltage in and out or a PO output. But the main advantage of the line module is that you can send MIDI, trigger, or PO sync to an external device and bring the audio signal back into OPZ. Let's look at that. We have an outboard synth accepting MIDI in from the line module's MIDI output using a standard TRS 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter cable. Side note, if you want to send MIDI to a device with a full-size 5-pin DIN MIDI connector, you'll need a TRS MIDI Type A adapter. There's also a Type B connector that some devices use, but that won't work with the line module, so be sure to get the correct adapter. Our synth's audio output is routed into the line module's audio input. 
But since this is a monosynth, we'll need to force OPZ to accept a mono input signal. Press and hold the screen button when connecting the input cable. We can confirm in the app that the signal is set to mono. With the connections made, we can send MIDI to the synth, can make adjustments in OPZ and on the synth. This is a powerful workflow. In a similar example, what if we wanted to connect a pocket operator to OPZ? First, we'll need to power off OPZ and disconnect any cables. Flip it over, unlock the rubber feet, and remove the backplate. On the line module, set the MIDI output switch to PO. Put the backplate back on the correct way and lock the rubber feet. Connect a cable from the MIDI output of the line module to the left side of the pocket operator. Then connect a cable from the right side of the pocket operator to the audio input on the line module. Next, we'll need to set the pocket operator sync mode. Each PO has a different shortcut for this, so be sure to check the corresponding user guide for the correct button combination. On the PO33 and PO133, press and hold the record button and then press the BPM button to toggle through the sync modes until we see SY2. This means the input on the pocket operator is the sync signal and the output is set to stereo. Now when we press play on OPZ, the pocket operator syncs properly and we can hear it coming through OPZ. A quick side note, since you can daisy chain pocket operators, you'll need to set the correct sync modes on each pocket operator depending on where it is in the chain. POs can send sync and mono signals on the same cable via its input and output. So check out the user guides for each PO you wish to daisy chain. There's a link in the description. Hey, make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video. It really helps. And check out the links below for other ways to support this channel. Thanks for your support.